Radio man Saruji Akikuza awoke on the 17th of February 1945 and peered outside the viewing slit of his bunker at a clear sky. It's the day after an armada of 880 American naval vessels arrived off the coast of Akikuza's posting, the small volcanic island of Iwo Jima. A sense of dread filled the 18-year-old radio man as he realised the perfect weather meant a rain of shells would surely be headed his way. Soon after, at 8am, US Navy warships opened an extended barrage of the island, ripping massive holes in the volcanic landscape. The fire grew so intense that Akikuza wondered if the Americans were trying to wake Mount Suribachi, the extinct volcano on Iwo Jima's southern end. After a few hours, the barrage briefly lifted as four US destroyers moved within 300 yards of the shoreline. Akikuza watched with fascination as about 150 men jumped off the destroyers and swam to the beach. These were the underwater demolitions teams whose task was to clear obstacles in preparation for the main landing. The frogmen went to work, while an uneasy quiet filled the air and Akikuza tensed up, wondering why the Japanese weren't firing. Suddenly, a heavy machine gun scattered the American demolition teams while artillery from Mount Suribachi smashed into the beach. The radio man shouted, yes, get him, and a duel between the American warships and the Japanese heavy guns on the island broke out with each side scoring hits. By 12.30pm, all of the frogmen had retreated back to their destroyers, while Akikuza whooped with delight at the apparent victory. However, this optimism is short-lived. Two days from now, the Americans will be back, and in greater numbers. This video is sponsored by Enlisted, a free-to-play World War II multiplayer shooter. Enlisted has a deep focus on historical authenticity with exciting and dynamic gameplay, large-scale combat involving dozens of other players, accurate World War II weapons and vehicles, and historical campaigns. I really enjoyed the squads feature, commanding a team on the battleground, coordinating armoured support and with engineers constructing fighting positions, while laying down a fusillade on the enemy with my Lee Enfield 303 rifle. Join me in Enlisted for free on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, as well as Xbox One and PS4, by following my link to get the game as well as a free exclusive bonus. Four months earlier, on the 3rd of October 1944, the US Joint Chiefs of Staff approved Operation Detachment, the assault on Iwo Jima. The island lay directly on the route taken by American strategic bombers on their way to mainland Japan, and Japanese fighters from Iwo Jima routinely harassed the B-29s. Thus, it was deemed necessary to seize the small island, which had an area of just 8 square miles. Lieutenant General Holland Smith commanded the operation, which involved three divisions totaling 70,000 marines. American planners estimated that the Japanese only had around 12,000 weakened men defending the island, and they would not offer serious resistance after months of continuous aerial bombardment. D-Day was set for the 19th of February 1945, with the 3rd, 4th and 5th Marine Divisions taking part in the invasion. However, the Japanese intended to defend the island to the death. In the months prior to the invasion, Lieutenant General Tadamichi Kuribayashi ordered 22,000 men to dig miles of tunnels and construct hundreds of fortified bunkers. Kuribayashi privately accepted that Iwo Jima could not be held against such overwhelming American firepower, but he planned to make the invaders pay for every inch of the island. His strategy broke with conventional Japanese military thought. Rather than concentrate most of his defences on the beaches to oppose the landings, Kuribayashi intended to lure the Americans into an attritional battle within Iwo Jima's difficult landscape. He also distributed orders to his men, which said, We shall not die until we have each killed ten of the enemy. As part of his plan, costly banzai charges are strictly forbidden in order to save the strength of the Japanese garrison as long as possible. On the 16th of February 1945, the American invasion fleet arrived off the shores of Iwo Jima, and the preparatory bombardment began. Although General Smith and Marine operational planners had requested 10 days of shelling before the men stormed the beaches, 
the Navy granted just three days for fear of wasting ammunition. This was further cut down to only 13 hours due to poor weather hampering visibility along with reluctance to expend more munitions than deemed necessary. Smith was furious at these changes, but his concerns went unheeded. Meanwhile, the Japanese defenders patiently waited out the barrage in the extensive tunnel system which proved near impervious to American shelling. On the morning of the 19th of February, the Marines boarded their landing crafts and set out for Iwo Jima's beaches while the final barrage from Navy warships and aircraft intensified. Because of the island's rough terrain, the only beach suitable for landing men and material was directly beneath Mount Suribachi, the highest point on Iwo Jima. Capturing the extinct volcano would be a priority objective for the 28th Marine Regiment of the 5th Marine Division. In the centre, the 23rd and 27th Regiments would seize the island's southern airfield. On the northern landing beaches, the 25th Regiment would scale the cliffs of a rock quarry where the Japanese had constructed a fortified defence. At 8.59am, the 1st Marines landed on the island and fanned out to secure a beachhead. Contrary to other battles in the Pacific, they did not take any fire from the Japanese defenders. Although some marines believed the barrage actually did destroy the enemy, General Kuribayashi's strategy was to allow the Americans to land without initial opposition. Once the beach was clogged with men and material, Kuribayashi gave the order to open fire. A hurricane of artillery and machine gun fire caught the marines out in the open and caused severe casualties amongst the first waves. Confusion reigned as many units attempted to find their bearings while engineers used tractors to desperately clear paths in the volcanic sand so tanks could move forward. Despite suffering heavy losses, the 28th Marine Regiment managed to cut off Mount Suribachi by mid-afternoon, which isolated the large volcano. However, it was one of the only successes of D-Day. The 25th Regiment attacking the rock quarry was pinned down and many of its units cut to pieces, including the 3rd Battalion, which only had 150 combat effective men out of its original 900 left by the end of the day. Altogether, the US suffered 2,420 casualties, including 548 killed in action on the 19th of February alone, the deadliest 24 hours of the war for the Marine Corps. Even Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone, a Marine Corps legend from his actions during the Guadalcanal campaign, was killed on the first day. General Smith saw the long casualty list on his command ship and remarked to a war correspondent, I don't know who he is, but the Japanese general running this show is one smart guy. The two following days saw slow progress as the 25th Regiment struggled to clear the rock quarry while the 28th Regiment faced a slog up Mount Suribachi. Yet, in the centre, the 23rd and 27th Regiments successfully overran the southern airfield by D plus 1, surprising General Kuribayashi. The Marines gradually captured the southern half of Iwo Jima, supported by massed artillery, naval gunfire and ground support aircraft. On the evening of the 21st of February, the Japanese launched a mass kamikaze attack on the American fleet supporting the invasion. Two aircraft dives into the escort carrier USS Bismarck Sea, which exploded and sank, while two more smashed into the fleet carrier Saratoga and caused massive damage. Despite the heavy losses suffered at sea, US naval aviation retained unquestioned air superiority off Iwo Jima, which greatly aided the advance on the ground. On the morning of the 23rd of February, D plus 4, the 28th Marine Regiment finally captured the summit of Mount Suribachi, and raised an American flag above the extinct volcano. Spotting the flag from the shoreline, Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal commented to General Smith, the raising of that flag on Suribachi means a Marine Corps for the next 500 years, before asking for it to be brought to him as a souvenir. Instead, the original flag was stowed away while six men of the 3rd Battalion 28th Marine Regiment secretly replaced it with a larger flag for Forrestal to keep. Associated Press photographer Joe Rosenthal caught a snapshot of the moment which became one of the most famous images of the Second World War. With the capture of Mount Suribachi and the fall of the rock quarry by D plus 5, the battle now shifted to the northern half of the island, 
which was still strongly held by Kuribayashi's men. The marines initially expected an easier fight, but soon found themselves running into the Japanese main defensive line. Casualties skyrocketed as the Americans struggled not just with the defenders, but the difficult terrain as well. In some parts of the island, the marines had to deal with hot sulphur fumes bubbling up from the ground, which only added to their misery. Nonetheless, the 3rd, 4th and 5th marine divisions slowly overcame major obstacles such as Hill 382, a fortified Japanese bunker nicknamed the Turkey Knob, and a series of ridges on the northwestern end of the island that one correspondent called Hell with Fires Out. These victories came at an astonishing cost as the marines suffered 7,000 casualties in 9 days for the capture of just 4,000 yards of enemy territory. On the 8th of March, men of the 3rd Marine Division captured Hill 362C, which finally broke the main Japanese defensive line, allowing other US units to force the enemy into isolated pockets. The loss of Hill 362C caused major concern in Japanese high command, and some officers who had been conspiring behind General Kuribayashi's back decided to take drastic measures. General Sender and Captain Inouye ordered their men to launch a Banzai charge intended on recapturing Mount Suribachi. This was in direct contradiction of their superiors' orders, but the insubordinate officers went ahead with their plan anyway. However, the Americans had noticed unusual activity during the day and were ready for the attack. When the Banzai charge began around midnight, the Japanese soldiers were caught out in the open and massacred as mass artillery and machine gun fire ripped through their ranks. Out of the 1,000 men who took part, almost 80% of them were killed in the doomed assault which failed to gain any ground. The Marines spent the next week slowly reducing the last Japanese holdouts and finally reached Iwo Jima's northeast shoreline. The advance was aided by napalm and flamethrower tanks which dealt with the strongest Japanese positions burning out the enemy from their tunnels and blockhouses. By the 16th of March, D plus 27, the main bulk of Kuribayashi's men had been forced into a maze of ridges and gorges at the northwest tip of Iwo Jima, nicknamed Death Valley by the Americans. Other Japanese strongholds on the eastern end of the island gradually fell, allowing some of the shattered and understrength marine units to be pulled off the island for rest and refitting. By this time, General Kuribayashi recognised that his men were starving, thirsty and nearly out of ammunition. On the 17th of March 1945, the Japanese commander transmitted a farewell message to Imperial headquarters. The battle is entering its final chapter. Since the enemy's landing, the gallant fighting of the men under my command has been such that even the gods would weep. His message ended with a poem. Unable to complete this heavy task for our country, arrows and bullets all spent, so sad we fall. Six days later, the nearby garrison of Chichijima received Kuribayashi's last transmission. All officers and men of Chichijima, goodbye from Iwo. On the night of the 25th of March, around 300 Japanese soldiers quietly left their positions in Death Valley and made their way past sleeping Americans towards Iwo Jima's central airfield. Once they had reached the edge of the airbase, the Japanese charged into a tented area where rear area auxiliaries and supply personnel had been sleeping. A bloody close quarters battle ensued where nearly all of the enemy attackers were killed while the Americans suffered 53 killed and 120 wounded. General Kuribayashi was rumoured to have personally led this attack but this has never been confirmed, and his body has never been found. At 9am the following morning, US Navy authorities declared the island secured, after 36 days of constant combat. Although organised Japanese resistance officially ended on the 26th of March, over 2,500 men still remained on the island in their bunkers and tunnels. The 147th Infantry Regiment took over from the Marines, and began the grim task of either convincing the holdouts to surrender, or destroying them. In the months which followed the end of the battle, over 1,600 Japanese holdouts were killed, while another 800 chose to give themselves up. However, 
The cat and mouse game between the American occupiers and the Japanese would last until the 6th of January 1949, when the last two members of Kuribayashi's original garrison finally surrendered. The Battle of Iwo Jima was one of the bloodiest campaigns of the war for the US Marine Corps. Altogether, the United States suffered 27,071 casualties, including 6,102 Marines killed in action. This casualty figure represented almost four times the number of Marine casualties during the six-month Guadalcanal campaign from 1942 to 1943. The Japanese fought nearly to the death, as only 1,083 of the nearly 22,000 men on the island eventually surrendered to the Americans. 27 Medals of Honor were awarded at Iwo Jima, the largest number for any single battle in the Second World War, which led Admiral Chester Nimitz to remark, among the men who fought on Iwo Jima, uncommon valor was a common virtue. Join me in Enlisted for free on PC, Xbox X and S and PS5. Follow my link to get the game as well as an exclusive bonus.